students today we are going to discuss about industrial sociology its scope and its subject matter the science dealing with the origin evolution and development of human society and its organization institution and functions is known as sociology coming together to live in a group is the compulsion of man not a choice as there are stronger animals than man starting from food gatherer to food producer the long journey of evolution of man made him develop the group living ways and the society is formed the study dealing with requirements of man living in group led to the development of sociology society in itself consists in the web of social relationships with the combinations and complexities arising from them as clique groups associations institutions systems etc the root of beginning of society is the social relationship which essentially develops on mutual awareness followed by reciprocal interrelationship and interactions generally sociology is restricted to the field of social institutions or social systems as the family or state the village or factory etc any reality especially a complex reality like industry can be studied from various point of view such as technological physical psychological etc but we must give emphasis to the sociological aspect or social element that manifests itself in industry industry seems to be a concept with no direct sociological meaning and it is difficult to specify a theoretical orientation along its lines the term industry has been taken from common sense language without sociological scrutiny it has been used mainly in two ways as synonymous with factory and as covering any large scale employment of labor and capital in the first use industry is seen as the manufacturing unit the second use of the term is widespread industry according to webster is any department or branch of art occupation or business especially one which employs much labor and capital and in a distinct branch of trade or in economics systematic labor or habitual employment industry is an economic activity concerned with the processing of raw materials and manufacture of goods in factories industry may be understood as the application of complex and sophisticated methods for the production of economic goods and services these complex methods employing use of machinery have been devised to improve quality and quantity of production a group of diligent and hard working men came together and formed a unit to carry economic activity concerned with the processing of raw materials and manufacture of goods in factories good results cannot be achieved through work on a single department in the enterprise it is necessary for all those functions which come into contact with the product during the development manufacture and use to cooperate in this work this means that quality must be considered and controlled by all these functions market research product development manufacturing engineering purchasing production inspection marketing and after sales service 
it is also necessary to coordinate the work of these functions on quality that the enterprise should have a wide approach to quality. Since all these functions are created by men in manufacture of any product, those involved form a group and thus society is formed. Industrial sociology, a term came into the use in the middle of 20th century owing to the famous experiments conducted by George Elton Mayo and his associates during late 20s and early 30s at Hawthorne Works in Chicago. It is the application of sociological approach to the reality and problems of industry. Industrial sociology also known as sociology of industrial relations or sociology of work is the study of the interaction of people within industry. It includes the study of boss subordinate, interdepartmental management, trade union relationships. Moreover, on a macro sociological scale, it is the study of the impact of industrialization on whole societies. Industrial sociology is a field of applied sociology and has grown mainly out of interest in such issues as productivity, motivation and unionization. Now, we will see the definitions given by different sociologists in about industrial sociology. Smith Jade states that industrial sociology is concerned with industry as a social system including those factors technical, economic, political which affect the structure and functions of the and the changes in that system. According to D.C. Miller and W. H. Form, industrial sociology is a substantive area of general sociology which might more accurately be termed the sociology of work organizations or sociology of economy. The adjective industrial implies the application of sociological theories and methods in one segment of society that is the one concerned with the economic function of producing and distributing the goods and services which society requires. Charles B. Spalding pointed out that Industrial sociologists center their interests upon the social organizations of the workplace including the pattern of interaction among people who are responding to one another in terms of their roles in work organizations or whose behavior is being affected by those roles. Parker SR and Brown RK says that industrial sociology is concerned with how the economic subsystem is related to other subsystem, how the subsystem is structured in terms of particular work organization and roles and how persons fit into these roles. H. G. Smith has defined the field of industrial sociology as the study of social relations in industrial and organizational setting and the way these relations influence and are influenced by relations in the wider community. Now, we will see what are the scopes and what is the subject matter of sociology. Industrial sociology is a field of applied sociology and has grown mainly out of the interest in such issues as productivity, motivation and unionization. Earlier works of Mayo, Rothlis Berger, White, Warner and many others showed keen interest on theory and practical problems are not focused. Recent attempts try to spell out the main dimensions of the field of industrial sociology. The accumulation of studies in this area seems now to have reached the stage at which one may attempt to offer such a systematic delimitation and to spell out the main dimensions of the field of industrial sociologists 
have had a better understanding of the process of supervision and the role of the foreman since the concept of leadership taken from other areas has been introduced. If industrial sociology is defined as the study of the relationship between rational and non-rational elements, it would include many major research areas that industrial sociologists have never studied. The sociology of science and the study of administrative behavior. On the other hand, if industrial sociology is defined as the study of the social relationships in industry, the definition would be too exclusive for it would leave out many relevant and significant studies in the field. The industry's social environment and its influence on the relationship within the industry. Most industrial sociologists regard the industry as a social organization devoted to the production and marketing of goods and services. Hence, the social relations and their influence on industrial activities such as productivity are given primary concern. The social relations may said to be internal and external. The internal relations are those existing within the industry and the external relations are those existing between the industry and the external bodies like government, community, educational institutes, etc. The internal relations are subdivided into formal, informal and mixed. The formal relations are those arising from the performance of the individual's approved duties which may be managerial or operational. Another formal relations may be called statutory that is sanctioned by law as those implied in collective bargaining, grievance procedure etc. They are also called as industrial relations. Informal relations are those that spontaneously arise among the workers within the industry. They are not regulated or controlled by any formal authorities. Example, cliques. Informal relations arise at the all level of industry. Managers, office workers or workers. Mixed relations or social functional relations are those which occur in the performance of one's functions. While instructing a trainee on the job, a trainer cracks joke or drops some pleasantries commenting like lazy bones. Social functional relations are developed. Now, we will see the diagrammatic representation of the social relations in industry. Social relations are classified into internal and external. Internal relationships, they are divided into formal, informal and mixed. The formal relations are further divided into organizational relations and statutory relations. The informal relations are further classified into individual relations and group relations. The social functional relations are coming under the category mixed relations. In external relations, we have government, community and societal relationships. Industrial sociology can also be fruitfully conceived of as a branch of organizational sociology which is concerned with roles and with processes of interaction, communication and authority that are specialized in serving specific goals. The various type of organizations seem to have common functional problems, but different structural solutions. All organizational structures, for example, have to face the problem of recruiting, training 
or socializing and motivating their personal that it may be function in accordance with the organizations regulations and norms. All organizations have to create and maintain among their personal and motivation adequate to the role of expectations of the organizational structure. Many of the studies on leadership, informal organization, small groups in organizational structures, morale and other phenomena deal with this set of problems. Another element common to all organizational structures is the dynamic relationship among the organization's goals, inner needs and need to adapt to a changing environment. Industrial sociology be defined as a part of organizational sociology dealing specifically with those organizations whose primary function is economic. It remains to consider how the generic concerns of organizational sociology apply to the study of economic organizations in particular. Organizational sociology focuses on the study of organizations from four levels or points of view. On the first level, organizations are studied as social units and interest here is divided between the study of the formal and the informal structure. The formal dimension often studied by administrators is, an, is in itself of little interest to the sociologist of organizations. The latter usually focuses on the informal relations and their connection to the formal system. He is interested in the formal only as it impinges on the social process and sets a stage for the more real process of interaction. On the second level, the study of organization deals with the relation of an organizational structure as a unit to other organizational structures and to non-organizational social units such as families, communities, ethnic groups, social classes and the society. On the third level, organizations are studied from the point of view of their relations to what would be called in person's frame of reference, personality and culture. The organizational personality studies are concerned with the interrelationships between the needs of the organizational structure and the needs of the personalities of the actors, problems of motivation and involvement. The study of the relations of organizations to cultural system focuses on two main concerns. Some scholars are interested in value orientations and inquire into the sources of the legitimation of authority and into the dynamic relations between the ideals and goals of the organization and the needs of the organizational structure itself. Others are more interested in the ways in which knowledge, mainly scientific knowledge is recruited and institutionalized within the organization. Other aspects of culture such as myth are also studied in relation to organizational behavior. The fourth level, the relations between organizations and their environment has thus far received relatively little attention, but theoretically there is place for this focus of interest. It would include the study of relationships between organizational behavior and the biological and psychological capacities and needs of the actors and the study of the respective adaptations between the organization and its geographical, physical environment. Most studies tend to focus on the organizational unit and the interrelations among its elements and tend to neglect 
its relation to other social units, even such significant ones as other organizations and collectivities. Study of the formal structure of economic organizations, the division of labor and the lines of communication and authority is conducted mainly as part of the study of administration. The sociologist theory interested mainly in the relationship between the formal and the informal aspects is quite often compelled to spell out the nature of the formal structure he is dealing with. Analysis of the informal structure of economic organization is one of the most important contributions of industrial sociology to the study of organization in general. The findings of Mayo, Rothlis Berger, Dixon, White, Homans, K. Levin and many others are too well known to be repeated here. Examination of the relations between the two aspects of organization, the formal and the informal constitutes a source of many interesting insights into the functioning of organizations and has become an integral part of the approach of industrial sociologists. The social relations occurring in the industry are broadly reviewed in industrial sociology. These emerging relations are also the focus of psychology, economics and personal management. The relationships between industrial sociology and the other sciences are discussed here. Mutual awareness or reciprocity is what characterizes social reality and distinguishes it from other sciences. Psychology has much affinity with sociology. When a labor throw down his instrument in anger, it is psychological phenomenon in which only one man is involved. But when the supervisor come to that place and fire him, a sociological reality has emerged. Industrial psychology deals mostly with individual and personal behavior and problems as selection of personal, definition of basic personal factors in job satisfaction, internal work motivation, accident proneness, etc. Industrial sociology stresses on the contrary, the social or interactional factors as individual and human relations, formal and informal organization, teamwork, communication, etc. Though communication or motivation is common to both disciplines of industrial psychology and industrial sociology, approaches and characteristic viewpoints of these two are clearly distinct. Economics mainly deals with the traditional activities of production, distribution and consumption, giving due significance to the problems of finance, exchange, etc. Profits, finance, monopoly, taxation, viability, extra or the question raised by economists without any emphasis given to human, social or psychological aspects. But now ideas have greatly changed in this respect and today not only are these sciences becoming more specialized and objective, but their fields of collaboration and mutual support are also expanding rapidly. Organizational sociology is the latest branch of sociology which is closely related to industrial sociology. Personal administration and social welfare. Industrial sociology though widen its scope, its method and approach remain essentially the same. The other social sciences especially psychology, economics and sociology provide tools to correct deficiencies and improve 
society and the practical social sciences, among which social welfare is prominent, apply them personal management or personal administration of which industrial social welfare is a part, is mainly the application of social sciences to the human problems of industry. That is the reason personal management of any industry is supposed to have adequate knowledge of other related social sciences, especially sociology and psychology to become more successful in his job. Summary Preliminary concept of industrial sociology deal with application of sociological approach to the problems of industry in order to achieve objects. Here key words are industry and society. Industry part of society is the application of complex and varied methods for the production of economic goods and services that is application of tools for economic production. As man is endowed with intelligence, he has always been an industrial being, homo industrialis. As manifest in society, sociological approach to industry consists in the study of social relationships, groups, institutions, behavior of man in group, of man in isolation affecting the outcome. Industrial psychology differs from industrial sociology as former is individual oriented, but later is group oriented. However, combination of both sciences results in social psychology of industry or industrial psychosociology depending upon emphasis given to psychological or sociological behavior of men. Economics is an important connector in all social sciences in industry as all activities are carried out by men together or alone. Industrial sociology is a specialized subject and is distinct from disciplines as industrial or social welfare or personal management which are concerned with practical problems of industry. Industrial sociology has paved the way for the development of these disciplines and now help one another that is from theory to practice or practice to theory that is empirical in order to activate the subject object that is the quest of man. Various types of social relations in industry as charted earlier particularly formal and informal relations play great roles in development of industry. Both soft touch and hot touch are needed in the administration of industry and mainly times on the spot decision based on established norms of industry are needed.